beautifully, amazingly, disgustingly, awfully good, and horrendously, greatly, awfully bad this masterpiece <laughs> is. Okay. This is the book of all time. I, all right. I had the best worst time ever reading Akotar. Akotar stands, I'm with you. Akotar haters, I'm with you. This book is it. But, I, I don't think this is love. But, if, if this is love, I don't want it. <laughs> It sounds terrible. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Tudor Ramble episode. I'm one of your hosts, Austin. And I'm the other host, Richard. And two Woo! masculine men who aren't compensating at all <laughs> are reviewing Akatar. Yeah, baby! A court of thorns and roses. That Woo! was... That was... Ma it's I... yeah! <laughs> okay so <laughs> sometimes we don't know how we have a youtube channel so <laughs> what we're doing today is rich you have not read the masterpiece of akotar no i haven't i've read it but i'm no you have not read it i'm excited i haven't read it but i'm excited i'm ready okay i'm here, ready to be amazed here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna give a sp not a spoiler free Okay, if you're coming to this video, I'm going to spoil the book for you, Rich. I have read oh, okay. Akatar thoroughly. Look at my notes, okay? I have read this book. Okay. I'm going to give you the whole plot. The whole plot? You're going to give me spoilers for Spoiler. this book? The whole thing. Okay, I, I have heard that for most romance-type novels, like, the spoilers don't matter. Not as it much. Does, it doesn't matter. What matters is the relationship and the, like, the push and pull. Precisely. So, Precisely. Spoilers don't matter. No, no. So I'm going to spoil the book for you. I'm going to give you plot point by plot point okay. on just how beautifully, amazingly, disgustingly, awfully good and horrendously, greatly, awfully bad this masterpiece <laughs> is. Okay. This is the book of all time. I, all right. I had the best worst time ever reading Akotar. Akotar stands, I'm with you. Akotar haters, I'm with you. This book is it. This is where fiction ends. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna spoil. And then after that, we're gonna make a <laughs> editing cut and I will have read the book. Yes, and then we'll actually talk about with Rich. We'll go through our review of the book. But I'm just gonna give you the plot. Go ahead. You ready for this? Lay it on to me. So this book is about there's fairies in this magical realm. And the main character's name is Fairy. What? F E Y R E. That's how I read it. Wait, wait, wait. is this a human that's named she, yes. Fairy? Yes. Oh. So I was it's so her name is Fairy and there's fairies. Let's start with that premise, okay? You, okay. you with me? I'm with you. Okay. Here's where it starts. Our main character Fairy and I'm not going to lie, the first couple of chapters are Akatar I was going like I get I get it. I get. So she's living a troubled home life. Her mother passed away. The father his legs broken and he's paralyzed in a sense. His her sisters don't appreciate her in a sense. She is the provider of the family. She's the youngest sister for this family. Okay. And she has to go hunt. So the very the inciting into this book is she's hunting and these humans, they're cast away on the very bottom of this continent. Back in the war against the fairies, they lost. And during this treaty, they got the little small sliver of land right at the bottom. I'm like, okay, interesting. Cool. How that interesting. Happens. Oh, this is sounds like fun world building. Exactly, exactly. Precisely. And so she's going hunting, and there's this rule you can't kill the fairies, but she's going getting food for her family. She says she sees a wolf. And when she sees that wolf, she goes, That almost looks like a fairy. Fairy says it almost looks like a fairy. Wait, how does a wolf look like a fairy? Fairies can shape shift. You didn't know this? Not particularly, but how, if it can shape shift and look like a wolf, how does she know it looks like a fairy? Because it was a big wolf. We're getting to the good stuff. Okay, okay, so, okay, okay, so okay, she, okay. She puts in like an ash arrow type thing because at this ash from the ash tree can kill the fairies. Okay, got okay, it, got so it, got it. she kills the wolf. It is a fairy. Okay, she goes, she goes back. Oh. How she finds out it's a fairy because she's feeding her family from the wolf fairy thing. And this other fairy comes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yep. She killed the wolf and she's feeding her family yeah. the wolf. Yes. Which is a fairy. Yes. They got to eat. They're starving. They're, okay. they're a hungry family. Okay. C Rich, catch up with me here. Okay? I'm with you. So I'm with you. she's feeding her family the wolf fairy sentient human thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the that's the concerning part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's feeding the family, and then this this other this other fairy comes and goes. You ate. You're eat, like you're killed and ate. You're eating my friend. Valid. Valid. Right. A, a valid reason to be upset. Good objection, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you you ate my friend. What do you do? And is very angry and says you have two options. Either 
I basically kill you or you come with me because a life for a life, you gotta, you gotta come with me because you killed my friend type of thing. Were you, now, I was thrown off by this. Just Sarah, Sarah J. Mass, I mean this in the best and worst way. This is the best four out of 10 book I've ever read. It, it, get, it gets better. Like I, had, I genuinely did not have a bad time. You know when you go and you watch TLC, 90 Day yeah, Fiance? Yeah. This is your book. This is the book for you. I'm, get, I'm like, I genuinely, I'm enthusiastic about when you read this book because okay, good. here's what happens. So takes, takes her away from the family because that's part of the treaty. We'll get to that. So a any questions at this point about what happened? Hold in the on. So the incident? humans can just kill them as long as they, you know, go with them at this point in the book. Yes. Ba basically there's the, Hey, this seems a little uneven. Little uneven, but hey, it gets answered later. It gets answered. I was very okay. confused at that point. That doesn't seem like weird. So you, you either killed and ate his friend, and you're cool with him coming with her coming to your house type of thing. Yeah, that seems strange. A bit strange. <coughs> A bit strange. So what what ends up happening is that fairy that came down. His name's Tamlin. And spoilers, of course, Tamlin and fairy. That's the romance. The 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 guy that comes and takes her is that's the whole romance that's starting and brewing. Okay. 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 So Tamlin is this fairy and. When f the fairy's in their, their human form, so she, she, fairy goes back to Tamlin's area and household, and the, I think it's called the Spring Court or something, they're, that manor area. Fairy place. Fairy place in this huge continent, but their, their section, and Tamlin's one of the high fae, he owns this area, but he has a mask on his face. And so do all the other people, you know, Phantom of the Opera-esque type thing, right? They all got masks. Okay. And so she can't see underneath the mask ever because this blight thing that there's this thing called the blight that cursed them all and they have to wear masks permanently because of the curse you follow okay any questions why because of the blight what's the blight it's the magic this didn't help him out in the war no the blight's bad the this blight's happened like 50 bad. years ago it's been expanding and because of that magic stuff they have to have the masks on if i'm understanding it correctly correct me if i'm wrong akatar people doesn't affect humans. No. Humans are good. No, the fairies. It's affecting the fairies. That you have, well, specifically this court, because they were wearing masks during this party type thing, and when the blight thing happened, which will be explained later, okay, they they're were, stuck. They were, they're, the masks are stuck on them because All of right. the magic. I, I get it. The magic went through and basically uh, heated up their face. They got really flushed, and then the mask fused to their face. Sweaty and sensual, yes. Got it. You're, you're with me. So she goes with Tamlin, this, this person that took her from her family type thing, and she is a free prisoner, in a sense. Where she... Those are oxymorons. Exactly. So she has the right to leave. But if she leaves, she'll probably die because there's a bunch of monsters and creatures. So Tamlin took her and says, hey, you do have the right to leave. Hey, Austin from the future coming in to correct what I said here. I had this wrong. So, Fairy or Feyre has the right to roam around and eat and has all this luxury inside of the manor with Tamlin, but she cannot leave. So, that I had that wrong. She's not free to leave, but she's free to roam around and kind of enjoy life, but not leave and go back home, at least at first. So, I, I mixed that up in my head. Sorry, I just wanted to correct that before continued listening to the podcast. You're free to go, but you're here. And you should stay here because you're safer here. But wasn't the whole agreement of like, I own you now because you took the life of my friend? Precisely. Now, so all, all, all the agreement is, I just got to take you away, but then you can go back if you want. That's what I was questioning. It does answer it by the end. We'll get there. Okay. But okay, okay. I'm going like, what's going on here? Sarah J. Mass, come on, hook me in. What's going on here? All right. Okay. Seems like a lot of... Uh, contrived situations to put the. I was I was it. confused. I didn't know what was connecting. I was I was putting it together. But here's what happens next. So they have all these masks on, and the central the sexual tension is increasing between her and Tamlin. Of course, there's some other characters I won't get into. I mean, we'll get it into is that. pretty hot when someone kills your best friend. That's. <laughs> I mean, man. <laughs> I mean, if we, if we have, if I ever come across a woman that actually gets to kill you, man, that'd be just so hot. <laughs> It'll, this video will be the start of it too. <laughs> so, so there's like hundreds of scenes. Okay, there's probably a couple, but where they're all like, "Hey, fairy, don't go out. It's dangerous. There's monsters and stuff." And she goes out, and she doesn't listen. And especially on this one night, where Tamlin, the other people, I think Lucian is the other fairy's name. Like I mean, the, the I wouldn't, command. I wouldn't listen to my food either. I, I would exactly. <laughs> why, why would you're listening to the people like we're captors to you? I go, of course you're gonna. Well, no, I mean, I just don't listen to the food on my plate. <laughs> It's true. If a cow tells me not to leave the farm, <laughs> stay. I'm not listening to the cow. Stay or leave, leave, right? Yeah, I'm not listening to the steak. <laughs> so there's all these scenes where she's, not, she's told not to go out, and especially this one night. Here's our midpoint of the book. 
This okay. is where it gets. This is where it starts to get all Akatari. Okay. Okay. There's this one night, and it's called the Fire Night, which signals the start of spring. Okay. And yeah. basically, what Tamlin does, they say, "Hey, fairy, stay inside. Don't come out." She doesn't know why. She goes out, of course. But Tamlin, during this night, during this ritual, turns an animalistic and feral. Ah, uh, uh, I see where this is and going. And since Fairy, our main character, is so hot, since she's she's the one, she can't attend or else he won't be able to control himself. And, okay. she, he'll, you know, she'll see a different side of Tamlin if she goes out. All right. And it gets it gets rough, you know. So so she she goes she goes and he he smells her. Yeah, gets her scent. Okay, as you do. And and I got this Reddit I got this Reddit title thing from the Akatar subreddit. Yeah. And this this user Jolly underscore Refrigerator Forty posts. Did Tamlin actually sleep with someone else during the Great Rite? And then underneath goes, "That's it. Lol. It's giving me the ick so hard." <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. He slept with other people in the great. I should have mentioned that for context. Yeah. It, during during the great fire thingy, he's going around like he's feral. He's sleeping with people for the ritual type thing. And yeah, as beasts do he's apparently. A beast, and okay. fairies also out there. And so when she goes out, and she gets in this situation with Tamlin, oh no, Tamlin's all feral. He goes up. He bites her a little bit. Gives a little nibble. You want. Uh, you know, here I'm. I'm actually gonna read off the page if you don't mind. Give it Let to me. me. Okay. Give it to so, me. So, <clears throat> you know, she, he's going and sleeping with other people, and Fairy, from this point of view, is saying, "Why would I want someone's leftovers?" I said, making to push him away. He grabbed my hands again and bit my neck. I cried out as his teeth clamped onto the tender spot where my neck met my shoulder. I couldn't move, couldn't think, and my world narrowed to the feeling of his lips and teeth against skin. He didn't pierce my flesh, but rather bit to keep me pinned. The push of his body against mine, the hard and the soft, made me see red, see lightning, made me grind my hips against his. I should hate him, hate him for his stupid ritual for the female he'd been with tonight. His bite lightened. She and his killed t- his friend. We're getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's sensual. His bite lightened and his tongue caressed the places his teeth had been. He didn't move. He just remained in that spot, kissing my neck. Intently, territorially, lazily, heat pounded between my legs. And as he ground his body against me, against every aching spot, a moan uh, slipped past my lips. <laughs> I can't. Sorry, buddy. Uh, I'm, and it goes on from there. I, I got a question. Yeah, yeah, Question yeah. here. Yes. It, what's the character development like mm-hmm. between these two yep. before this? You know, it's Did a they bit... actually start, like, getting to know each other? Is there some type of tension? Or, no hand-holding like, yet. No, 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 none of that. Nope. Just understanding of, like, oh, I don't know who he is, and then I start to learn some positive things. Like, I, I start to understand him. Is there, like, you know, something of, like... Were they? I'll be the first Eddie? to say there was. Here's the weird vibes of he. He was basically saying, "I'm taking care of your family. They're okay." I, I sent. Why them. would he? We're getting to that. We're still. <laughs> I had a lot of questions too. But he says, "Hey, I'm taking care of your family. They're good. You're also safe here. Here's food. You can join us for dinner. Don't leave. You'll die. But also, you're free." It was that kind of setting. Huh. Yep. Yep. I had that. I said that too. I said, "Huh." I'm having. I'm having a lot of very negative stereotypical thoughts <laughs> <laughs> but just wait till you read it okay uh, so, all right so the plot's continuing and after this night that they had the tent you know they're, no, starting, yeah, to, yeah, they're yeah. starting to connect and their bond grows since then because she sees a different side of them they they're from here they have their scenes okay okay and yeah, yeah. tamlin one night says hey i love you all right fairy she can't say it back she can't say the words i love you back yeah I mean, but Tamlin does love the person that killed his friend. So far, yeah. so, so far, yeah, um, we're getting to that. I promise. I promise. The tension okay. here is it's palpable. Okay. And so he says, "I love you." She can't say it back. Background here. It's a, it's a lot to well, condense into here. To, so. to fairy, I mean, he's just a, a big hunk of meat. Big hunk of meat. Sometimes like, you sleep with the hunk sometimes of meat. Sometimes you, sometimes you eat, eat them. It's <laughs> what's the difference? <laughs> so dinner. A late night snack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> depends on the night. 
this is this is the most insight you've ever given to a review actually this is <laughs> this is beautiful so it says i love you she can't say it back and in the background here the blight is expanding and growing it's getting worse tamlin sends her back home to stay safe quickly what is the yes. blight explain like specifically what it is it's bad is it like a we, fog we is find it like just a area of curse where things are weird like what is it the, okay so during the blight a if lot the of blight the blight is expanding yeah, yeah, yeah. it must be uh, of something yeah a substance. lot of the different there's some evil creatures in so not just fairies but there's these other type of imagined fantasy creatures that are evil so that they whisper and can they can lure you and kill you type of things in the woods out there so there's these different things that are becoming okay. more free and able to kill people and th so that kind of blight's growing it's the weird of it's the zone of weird the zone of weird is expanding the zone of weird is expanding. Yes. Got it. Yes, yes, yes. And so that's expanding. So Tamlin sends Fairy back home to go take care of things. Oh, I, I also do want to mention, because this is important for later in the plot, that Fairy, during the, the ritual night with Tamlin, mm -hmm. um, some of the people from the big court area that we'll find out more about, this, this court, I'll, I'll explain that later, but some people from the outside came and asked, oh, who's this girl, Fairy? And some person, Rice, I forget his name exactly, but asks her, hey, what's your name? And she she knows they're looking to kill her, or her family back home, because she knows Tam they're against Tamlin, and they're like, oh, Tamlin likes this girl, let me find out her name so I can hurt her family back home, is basically the mentality, right? Okay. So she it. gives a fake name of some villager in a nearby town. Uh, like, a re sorry, a real name of a, like someone she knew during childhood that was in a different town so that she could throw off the trail. Why not give a fake name? You just make it completely fake. No, no. Fake. She gave a completely real name of someone she knew. Why? Because that's terrible. Fairy's <laughs> <laughs> a terrible person. <laughs> just wait. She's awful. Just wait till you find out what happened. Because did, she, did this like this this random villager like slight her at one point? No, no. Charged actually, her too much for bread. Seems like a great person. Oh, <laughs> just oh, I don't want them to hurt my family. Go hurt. That other family over there. Precisely. Precisely. Oh. And so she gives that other name. So there's a weird thing. Maybe the, the thought was if she gave a fake name, it would have came back and hurt Tamlin. I don't know. Maybe there's something like that. But moving on from that, she gets sent back home because the blight's expanding. Tamlin's and all this happening. So she goes back home. Her family's member was kind of wiped, except for her sister didn't get wiped during the thingy, whatever. Not, not Wiped? What What do you mean? The fairies, so that they wouldn't know she was taken away by the fairy. Because when that was happening, the Tamlin came in. The whole family was there and huddled down. And like, oh, I'm taking uh, like oh i'm fairies are real because fairies weren't known they didn't know what they looked like there was all this lore about fairies in the beginning there's some context i should have given there probably but basically yes. some yes, of the, yes. the memories were wiped this thing happens whatever and so she comes back her father and sister don't thought that the memory that was filled in there was that she was visiting her aunt not going to the fairy land and being taken away Okay. Small subplot point. We're not back home for too long. I'll skip to the important part of where she decides. The I'm, sexy part? The sexy part. It's getting Good. sexy. So she, she goes back to, uh, to Tamlin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even during the blight. She's I thought feeling, it was dangerous. But she didn't say I love you. But I thought it was dangerous for her to be out there. It, it's, it's dangerous, but she's going back because the whole love thing. She feels it. She's like, oh, I should have I stayed. I, I should have never left survive? him. She goes back. It's, it's happening, okay? She, okay, okay? she goes through. She goes through, and she gets back, and Tamlin's gone. The whole thing's like almost ransacked. Or just, it's empty, except for Alice, who is one of the servants there. Uh -huh. is now Alice, is this is three quarters way through the book, just about, is updating her on, hey, here's actually the news. Here's actually what's going on. Tamlin's gone. He was taken. The Blight is actually another word for Amarantha. Amarantha is the big bad villain, Okay. And okay, she also okay. reveals the whole treaty thing about the, the whole treaty I, that he was Tamlin was talking about where either you die or we take you. That's not real. The whole thing is Tamlin is cursed by Amarantha with the mask and Amarantha took all the powers from the high phase. She took all their powers during this one night and she's uber powerful and controls everyone. She, she can do all the sorts of magic and Tamlin and all their powers are very muted. They could still do things like shapeshift, but they can't do a lot of magic. Their magic is limited because of Amarantha and Amarantha loved Tamlin, okay? And as a curse, was like, here's the curse, Tamlin. It's something like this, something like this, where she said, Tamlin, your curse is, like, if you can get a human to love you, the curse goes away, that kind of thing. And Tamlin's whole thing was, the only way to get a human to love him, would, it would have to be through um, a person, a human, that genuinely hated fairies. And to genuinely hate the fairies, you would, had to, a test was to kill 
Tamlin's friend, because Tam, meaning that, that, bear with me, then ask the question, okay? So Fa Fairy, our main character, kills the wolf fairy to, to show, to, to show, I love this book so much, to, to show that she actually does hate Fairy so that the curse can be broken and Tamlin and Fairy can, if she says, I love you to him, the curse is broken type of situation. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, hold on a second. The curse is specifically get a human to say I love you. Well, a human that hates fairies genuinely with all their heart. And the only way to prove that they do hate them is to kill so, one. Like, it might, the stipulation even might have been like, hey, you, you, you hate so much that you killed. Or like, just genuine hate so bad that you have to turn a human that hates so much than, that, than loves. That's, okay, the, that's okay, the basic okay, premise. I'm, okay. I'm probably missing a needle in there, but that's the premise. All right. Oh, you got that? I I'm following. I'm okay. following. Okay, so Amarantha, all of them, Tamlin gets taken. They're, they're all in this, uh, it's like the mount, something under the mountain, it's called. Oh, okay. question. Oh, yeah, question, go ahead. Question, oh, yeah, yeah. Ask away. Ask away. Um, Amarantha's got all these powers, yeah. right? And like, t basically took, took it all. Yes. A while ago. The powers, This isn't yes. new. Yep. This isn't a new thing. Why did she wait? Why did Amarantha wait this long to just take Tamara if she likes him and is crazy? Uh, because there was some politics in the background. Where she she still had to grow. It was this happened fifty years ago. She had a lot of the power, but she still had to make moves in the background type thing. It wasn't couldn't happen overnight. She had to give Tamara a chance for the plot. Exactly. She had to give mainly Fairy a chance to meet Tamlin and then all this stuff. Okay. Oh, it, it gets better. It okay. gets better. So. It's, there's th the this rest is a lot to drop on the uh, you know the servant three quarters of the way into the this is th this is coming from the servant she's dropping this all on fairy and fairy now has the information that Tamlin all of them were taken to the place under the mountain area where Amarantha all the high phase they're all kind of there this is where the rest they're, of the they're wait they're waiting for exactly. uh, fairy to this is this is where the rest of the book happens okay so they she goes there and. She shows up, and the first thing she basically sees is next to Amarantha. You know, Tamlin's there, basically a, a pet right now. Because Tam Amarantha loves Tamlin, and Tamlin is staying stoic and not saying a word because he doesn't want to show Amarantha what's affecting him emotionally. Because uh, I'll, I'll explain that. I should have said this in a different order. But Fairy walks in and sees basically hanging there on the cross the girl's name she gave earlier. Ah, the girl's name. The she predictable gave, thing. That yeah. Happened. So she was tortured and marred and killed and brutally destroyed. We didn't see her. All that happened, but we see the tortured dead body. Oh. To the person that Amarantha thought Tamlin loved. Then she sees Fairy and says, "Instead of killing you, I'm going to give you three tests." Why? <laughs> So she says to Fairy to prove that, you know what, here's, she says, you got two options, Fairy, okay? Just bear with me. Either die or I'll give you everything you want. So she has two options, either one, okay, one, she can pass these three trials. The second option is you could solve this riddle. And the answer to the riddle What's the story about, Rich? A court of thorns and well, roses? A romance is about what? Uh, psychopathic a uh, a dependency? A blank story. A what? A blank story. What's the word? I don't want to use the word love with this. <laughs> yeah, but, I don't think this is love. But, if, if this is love, I don't want it. <laughs> It sounds terrible. <laughs> you have to eat people. It's a it's You have to eat people. You have to kill your friend, kill the neighbor. Oh my god. So the answer to the riddle is love. It's pretty obvious that it's love. Oh. But she can't answer it. She doesn't know the answer to the riddle when the riddle's told to her. She goes she's dumb. <laughs> Fairy's young, okay? She's she's innocent and she loves hot Tamlin who's like five hundred years old and she's like in her teens. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, uh -huh. I just thought of that too. Yeah, Tamlin's very old. She's very young. That that seems to be a a, a, a trope. <laughs> it's a general trope. Yeah. So, huh. so she has to go through the three trials because she can't solve the riddle. So one of the first. Can, can I please be read the riddle? 
Oh, you want the riddle? I want the riddle. Okay, let me. Uh, it's gonna. I want to see how stupid she is. Okay, maybe maybe, maybe I'm prejudging. Okay, I'm maybe going... it's a pretty tough riddle. <laughs> I'm gonna cut to me finding the riddle. Here we go. Could be a tough riddle. Okay, here it is. Okay, give it to me. There are those who seek me a lifetime, but we never meet. And those I kiss, but who trample me beneath ungrateful feet. At times I seem to favor the clever and the fair, but I bless all those who are brave enough to stare. Oh, to, to dare. By large, my ministrations are soft-handed and sweet, but scorned I become a difficult beast to defeat. For though each of my strikes lands a powerful blow, when I kill, I do it slow. The answer is a love story? The answer is love. Oh. Love. But Fairy doesn't know that yet. She has to okay. go through the trials and the three trials, the first one, just to show that Dune influences all. She faces a sandworm. Oh. She does? Yeah. An actual okay. sandworm. A, a worm. A big worm. A, a big, a big worm. worm. She has to, big. she has to kill the worm by putting up the bones of the things the worm ate and spike them. It's pretty good. It's smart. She puts it and the, the worm dies. It's, it's a good scene. And then after okay. that, Tamlin is uh, the, the second, sorry, Fairy, the second trial is... It is very confusing that there's the group of fairies. And, and she's called Fairy. just Fairy. That's yeah. not... That, that I don't was, like that. It is a big qualm with I've the I've been very confused every time you're like, the fairy. And no, I'm no, going no, like... Fairy. Fairy, okay. Fairy versus fairies. Tamlin. Tamlin. But, so here's what happens. The, okay. se the second trial, Fairy has... There's three boxes, essentially. And she has to pick the right one. Something like that. And she, oh, also, she can't read. Okay. I forgot to mention that, but she can't read the the thing on it, and what, so she can't read. But part of it, mm -hmm. she gets helped in the background and gets the answer from someone who's helping her. In the like, that's also against Amarantha, gives her the answer type thing. So Hannibal kills innocent people, cheater. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so, so of of the three, she has to select. She ends up picking the right one because she she gets the answer type thing. There's a little back subplot story, but we'll talk about that more in the spoiler section when you've read the okay. book. Okay, so. Does that, and then the third and last trial is she has to kill. Uh, there's three people with the hoods on, and she has to kill them each. Kill. Well, she's pretty good at that. Oh, she kills she's, the first one, no problem. <laughs> she's pretty good at killing so these people. In, in her head, she's like, I shouldn't do this. She kills the person. But then by the end, she gets to the last person, and it's Tamlin. And she has to... Well, oh, hold on a minute. Yep. This isn't like a fight to the death against Amareth's uh, no. like, people. No, she has to kill just them. like innocent people captured. Yes, innocent people captured. And Amarantha gives the innocent person, says, kill this person if you really love him. So, kills the person, gets the Tamlin. Yeah, right? <laughs> gets, to, gets to the third person, un unveils the hood, it's Tamlin. She has to kill Tamlin to prove she loves Tamlin. That's stupid. So, of course, instead, she figures out, solves the riddle's love, solves it, Tamlin gets his powers back, turns into a beast... All the fighting happens. Amarantha goes down. And then, love story over. Fairy wins. Fairyland, book two. Let's go. Love it. Do you want to take a breather and we cut to uh, you having read the book? I I'm before that. Mm -hmm. Just to. Yeah, any questions? Hey, women in the audience, when you're looking at us reading our uh, our big old action books and our uh, you know our Red Risings, our uh, you know our Wheel of Time, you know stuff, or just our slop anime slop, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. whatever cheap manly garbage, uh, you have no legs to stand on. Th this is this is like oh. Rich, I oh could have misinterpreted this beautiful book. So you are going to have to read it for yourself. I'll read it. You're going to read it for yourself. See where I was right or wrong. I just loved so much explaining this plot to you. I had, I didn't have a bad time. It sounds like it moves pretty quick. It's a quick one. All right. I'll see. Well, you'll see me in two seconds and uh, me in like a week. So. All right. Cut scene. Bye, everybody. So I finished Akatar. And I felt inclined to be in a mood. So I wanted to set the scene you're appropriately. Look, you're looking dashing, Richard. You're looking mighty dapper yourself. Now that you've officially read Akatar. Yeah. How did my spoiler-free stack up to the best worst book of all time? 
you properly set my expectations. Without your prepping of this uh, book, mm -hmm. I would have liked the book a lot less. Mm. I enjoyed it more after our discussion. I know it would have been worse. Did you enjoy in. it because you got to read it and you know you could talk about the steaminess with me? Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking while reading on a plane, which, by the way, reading Akatar on a crowded airplane, shoulder to shoulder. Was it the physical or ebook? Both. I had ebook in my ear. It's a weird thing. And I feel like I dipped my toe into what I know way more women deal with. And I got to say, you women are just psychopaths. Like, this is light. Like, this is this isn't this is a romance. It ain't smut. There's actual smut out there. How the hell are you listening or reading smut in like public settings? Like just out in the open. <laughs> I was uncomfortable listening to the steamy sex scenes <laughs> on a crowded plane. <laughs> It made me uncomfortable. Uh, can we, let's set this conversation in the mood, since the mood's okay. nice, with saying a very true and specific thing. The sex scenes in here are better than basically every sci-fi fantasy book I've read. The reason, so this Akatar review, why it's the best, worst book ever, it is the epitome of, you know, 90 Day Fiance TLC stuff. It is love mm -hmm. is blind. It is, you know what, I'm going to watch it anyways. Stop me, okay? <laughs> For decades now, centuries now, fantasy's had some somewhat of this stronghold of, you know, the guy, and you, the guy fantasy, you write the the hot woman who's just like she's she's not one of the girls she's she's, she's yeah. different she's different than the other girls but she's still hot though and i'm just oh, gonna yeah. she she uh, on one hand oh, is like yeah. she knows how to like she she's one of the boys but also she's just really hot and for feminine you specifically. too yeah. oh yeah and she's just you're just going to rampage her <laughs> and then you're reading these sex scenes and, and fantasy books can very much you know let's let's start this conversation i'm going to say two things mm -hmm. you know fantasy books let's be honest sometimes those guy fan especially the 80s can dehumanize and really objectify women and it's about time woman came back and objectified us <laughs> it's about damn time woman and i feel properly honorably objectified oh I yeah feel, no, it's oh baby it's well deserved oh I, baby tamlin tamlin is tamlin is as object it is as bad as a character as the typical like Conan the Barbarian women. Like it's almost one for one on badly written <laughs> you <can> just <laughs> Just a piece of eye candy. Like, they are completely objectified. The, the females in that story that you just, whatever, yeah. you didn't even name them because they didn't even probably have a name. It was just a woman with hot stuff. You know <laughs> what? Maybe, okay, give give Sarah J. Mass a little credit. Yeah. A notch up. I remember Tamlin. Like, at least has a name, you not blonde bimbo number three. <laughs> Tamlin. Now, let's. Where do we begin with this story? Now, okay. But let me begin with something here to preface. Mm -hmm. So I explained the plot to you. Yeah. You got into it. What What were you expect? Was you expecting exactly what I said? And you got that. I was expecting worse. <gasps> oh. And I will say it was more competent than you let on. Uh huh. But everything you said was right. <laughs> <laughs> so you would say that this surpassed your expectations. Akotar was better than you thought it would be. Oh, 100%. Oh. It's 100% better than I thought it would score. Oh. I'll be honest, it wasn't difficult to read until basically the ending. Like everything The whole like, trial portion? Yeah. With Amarantha? Amarantha ruined the ending. She was, she Honestly, was something yes. else. Yeah, Amarantha yeah. was the worst part. Everything else was fine. Like, did okay, you, were you I feeling... have plenty of complaints, but... It was not a chore to read. I no. just kept like there's there are books out there where you're like, oh Jesus, another chapter. I, I just got to put it down. It was a page turner. Kept reading. Yeah. So 
there's that. I liked it more than I thought I would. Were you with me here? The first couple chapters of setting up Feyre's character and her family dynamic, not a bad start. I was, not, not a bad one, but also I, I thought it was a little funny. Of like, It felt over the top. You know what I mean? She's such in the shitter. Like, yeah. <laughs> her her mom's dead. Her dad's legs broken. Her sisters hate her. She just killed a fa- a fairy, right? Fairy, Feyre. I was but right. The name's I hate, always confused. I hate it. I I hate her name. Well, I I hate that her name is Feyre. Yeah. And there are fairies. It was too much for me. My brain like they are too close to being spelled the same and they sound the same. That took me way too long to like actually get it right i listening to the audiobook and reading it i would read the word fairy like fairy yeah and i couldn't i couldn't stop myself from going like no 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 it's no it's a fairy fairy it's like bilbo being called the rabbit if you, rabbit like if, oh. his, if his name was rabbit oh yes and you'd go like rabbit okay the hobbit, like, yeah ugh. rabbit okay hobbit rabbit rabbit the hobbit yeah no it, fairy the Go, talking with the fair, it's just it was a linguistic thing, you know. Yeah, no, it, yeah. it bothered me a little bit. But other than that, I <laughs> the start though, she was in the shitter. She was in the shitter. Yeah, and I'm just like, you know what? Th- this this girl has some some real daddy issues. Like the mm-hmm. worst character of her family is definitely her father. Her father's the worst. <laughs> 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 like, be like, oh, but her sisters are mean to her. It's like her father is less than worthless he offers nothing but harm he's a complete liability as a parent and it's like i get why she has like daddy issues now i i i I, I was one is that sexist stuff me to think like going like hey this romance about like kind of this stockholm syndrome of like hey this strong father figure like not not so gross older man comes and kidnaps younger girl and kind of how forces old is them Feyre? to fall a love is she, i think it's young can i can i go fact check that real quick we'll I be think, back in one I, second i think it's like 17 just fact checked yeah. um so Feyre's 19 and tamlin is 510 at least she's 19 she doesn't She's not written to be 19. <laughs> I'll be honest, how she's written, it seems like she's a lot younger. <laughs> At least she's... So I see what you're saying. Of Hey, I, I'm just saying not she's a very, minor. She sounds immature is what I'm just getting at. I, That's you, how it sounds. You know what I'm very curious about, too? Hmm. I'm very curious with Feyre and Tamlin's relationship, and you got Rysand in there, too. We'll talk a little bit about yeah. that. But I'm curious for... For the audiences is targeted for the romance, the females out there. Mm-hmm. If this is your thing, is this is the is the age gap the kind of the 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 <laughs> oh he's a he's dangerous, but he's the creature of the night. Is that just commenters? Please say below. <laughs> is this what you want? <laughs> is this I the ideal man? Because I will start changing him. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I had um I had. My, my girlfriend also mm-hmm. buddy read this with me and yeah. um she stopped after a chapter or two rightfully so mm-hmm. <laughs> and i said you know what she has better that's, taste that's a it's a good quality to have in mm-hmm. in your future wife you know <laughs> it's a it's a solid quality <laughs> i was like that's good honey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now i know it's not for everybody but hey maybe there's the guys out there that that like this as well and i i want to i want to put the stance of hey I we're mean, not we're not too we're not trying to be over masculine and be like oh no, we don't we're, have. We're fra- getting in touch with our sensitive side. Here's the thing: we do have fragile masculinity. That's shelve that aside. Mm-hmm. We're like genuinely Aquatar. I mean, is the best and worst and best. I I would fight somebody to the death if they said this book was awful. I would say <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> Tamlin's the freaking king. Feyre is a boss ass bitch. And then if somebody said this was their favorite ever, or if they liked it, if they said they liked it, I'd say you're wrong. Nerd, you should love it. <laughs> you, should, <laughs> you should. Well, okay. I I just gotta like say mention this about Farah. Of course, it. So she's starting off like ultimate sympathy for mm-hmm. her, right? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. like, man, 
Her sisters are awful to her. They're just terrible. She's basically supporting her family. Her father is just deadbeat, nothing, life-sucking, worthless hunk of a man. And then they talk about like her, her boy toy in the village. And at first you're like, oh, okay, whatever. That's just your boy toy. Yeah. There was a moment like afterwards that I had to like go back and read a second of like, she said, oh yeah, but now he's getting married or is married now. And I haven't like gone back to him. It's like, it's like, okay, he's, he's moved on. And then kind of almost immediately he's like, oh, come on and let's, uh, let's go bang in the barn. And she knows he's married. Basically, like, and I was like, hmm, it's not the best quality in your main kids. I was like, well, wow, that's that's a shitty thing to do. You know, what else a- is a, you know what else is a shitty thing to do? To mm. say some random person in a town next door is your name when you could have given any fake name. And she ends up getting tortured and bludgeoned and ripped apart. That she knew that was probably going to happen. That's why she didn't give her name. Now, here's the thing. You're asking for flawed characters. She's a flawed main character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she also, like... She's no Mary Sue. She killed and ate her uh, her future husband's best friend. <laughs> so, so when you're explaining the plot to somebody, it's going like, yes, that's that did happen. Yeah. It's a strange... I, like, There's it, a lot of strange things here. It's... What do you think? What do you think about the big midpoint where it starts to get real steamy? That night where, okay, I thought it was going to be way worse. You did. I was prepped, and I was th- like, the way you sounded it, I thought that she was going to be basically raped by this guy, and then somehow also fall in love, which was going to make it just worse. I was like, I was, I was going into like expecting that scene, and then ultimately nibble on the neck and i'm like okay okay you were expecting like, you're expecting awful and you got, i was expecting okay. awful and then it went down to like a little um non-consensual neck nibbling which not good to do with the office but that's not rape and so i was like oh this is not as bad as i thought if and, it's not yeah. good to do with the office why have you we're not going to talk about uh, this place doesn't count as an office. Just this clarifying. Is a, this is just, just clarifying. You, <laughs> you, this is the the worst office ever. If this is an office. <laughs> so you were expecting much worse. I was expecting much worse, but I did have some fun. <laughs> Wait, what? Where I had some fun with just the characters. Of, I found them ridiculous. <laughs> like mainly everyone but Farah. 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 Right. Fairy. Farah. 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 Good. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Tamlin? Tamlin? Yeah. I think of Tamlin when I go to sleep. <laughs> I think of Tamlin when I awake. Tamlin is... What every man should be? No. What <laughs> every man can't be. That is... It's, again... <laughs> It's we deserve this, Rich. Oh, 100%. men have dominated fantasy for too long, and Sergey Mass is showing us what we have done. Oh yeah, no, it's hey, how do you like the shoe on the other foot? And it's, you know what? I kind of respect it. Oh no, I, I, <laughs> hey, look, absolute all the more power to you. Like, I at, to some degree, like, is it better to have like fully realized characters? And it's like. With wisdom and experience, you can write both men and women to a of course. certain respectable degree. Of course. That's mm-hmm. nice. I like that. that that's your that's M.O. Wangs. I, your M.O. Wangs is like, yeah, come on now. I enjoy reading those. Mm-hmm. However, I think both sexes should be allowed. They're just little, like, yeah, you know, they're a little fantasy. Yeah. Like, ridiculous. It's like, yeah, it's not realistic. The other se- Sometimes you're looking at the other sex as just eye candy and like wish fulfillment of like that's what I want them to be because the reality is actually difficult because I have to communicate and compromise yeah. and all things that like I don't want to do that I just want easy simple fantasy yeah so you know what both we're all allowed we're all allowed to it's have all our fine. smutty objectifying you know what okay it's great and here, here's the thing too everybody I ask every female every person mm-hmm 
every person who says they don't like this book and every female who reads this and goes like, that's not what I want in a man. This has millions. <laughs> M with a millions of sales. <laughs> oh, some of you are lying. <laughs> who is lying? Are we in a niche bubble? No. Where, uh, here's the who, thing. Who's li- no, Rich, who is lying to us? Someone. It's, this wi- is- it's women on hold. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, sales numbers don't lie. Men like big boobs. It's why... Let's, that's why they sell let's have an honest you, conversation you put and, you put a big big pair of titties on book game it'll probably sell much better with men and for some you know 50 shades of gray is one of the highest sold books of all fucking time there's a reason it's not it's not like fictional it's not like oh it was all a goof <laughs> sarah j mass is one of the highest selling authors in america for, a reason. It's not. It's not everyone is doing it for a meme. People that resonate we're, with we're it. We're only want we're something. only able to meme it because so many people love it. Yeah, <laughs> or at least read it. I don't, I'm so confused. Uh, and hey, if you are a stan, if you love Akatar, down below, give us your thoughts and your reasons. Yeah, so tell us. Tell why. us down below. And I, I'm I'll be honest. Utterly what curious. What I've enjoyed. What yeah. I what I most enjoyed this book was putting myself into a perspective that I don't normally see like i for the most part i read a lot of fantasy sci-fi and a lot of that is tailored toward a male-centered audience and i'll read like uh, i mean basically most action heavy you know fighting bang bang swords and shields and guns above like yeah for the most part that's a guy centric guy centric thing yeah i don't read fantasy romance or like where the entire point in this book was the communication connection between these two characters. Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, the romance is handled, okay, on her end, significantly better than on his end, which is exactly the same thing with stuff like, uh, remember when we read Fire Upon the Deep? Yeah. Um, Yeah? Or just any of the sci-fi books were like, Immediately, the oh, guy no, meets woman. Neuromancer is a great example. Neuromancer is a better example. Case treats Molly like a piece of meat. He does. And just like she's cool, she's badass, but also she just wants to ride him every, you know, noon and past Sunday. Like, right. sure. Okay. To a certain degree, you understand why Case likes her. Mm-hmm. Of course. Case is a better written character than Molly. I mean, Raleigh actually has something, but that's another time. But the point is, like, yeah, that's targeted toward the male audience. This one, targeted toward the female audience. What are a broad swath of women looking for in the fantasy guy? What are the traits? What is it, like, makes them, if at least not, like, oh, this is what we want. This is what interests us. Maybe that's something. It, I found that very fascinating because... Yeah, I just don't. Get Again, to that's that. the question I have though, because I think a lot of people will give you the pushback of "No, this is not what." Thing is, I but I he, like here's the you here's the maybe, numbers. but the numbers don't lie. It's it's like this, guys. So this is also a trend as well. Mm-hmm. Guys are can be very visual. Females can, in general, be very um, like when they read something or just the, the, the trigger in oh. your brain. Oh, for, yeah, no. For, for guys, it can just be like porn is a bigger issue for guys yeah. than female. Hey, fe- women watch porn oh, too. Hey, look. But as a. But for the most part, Fifty Shades of Grey is just woman's porn. It's literary format. It, yeah. So you look at the different audiences, it seems like. Guys, for, are, guys are not reading the Playboy <laughs> magazine articles. No. Let's no, no, be no. honest. Guys are, guys are looking at, oh, googly moogly. <laughs> yeah. And, googly moogly. <laughs> and women, uh, they'll read something, get some emotional connection. Well, and it's, it's something about the that. story there and the, the excitement. The power fantasy, the like the back and forth, the will they, won't they. The, yeah. yeah. I, I, the the, the much, dynamics you between know the what? two. And it goes both ways. Like, the better emotional intelligence than us guys that are going like, oh, rock do thing. And then we all hail the rock. Yes, the <laughs> rock did the thing. Oh. <laughs> and then woman read and reading something like this where we're reading Tamlin, we're reading her and just going like, ah, this is... This is something I, you know, else. I just want a man who like had 
he is older than me, has all this power, wealth, money, is super ferocious, is willing to, like, he's a monster. He can kill these people on the battle. But to me, he shows his softer side. Yeah. That, like, he's a monster for me. I mean, like, oh, yeah. I am the one that brings out his softer side. To the, rest, the Beast. To the Beauty re- and the Beast. It this is, is, I mean, it, hey. It is Beauty this, and the Beast. This story like, is, if, if it's not yeah. clear, it, yeah. this is... Sarah Jane Mass retold Beauty and the Beast. It's, it's what it is. <laughs> it's Beauty and the Beast with aged up. <laughs> There's an age gap, I think, in the original Beauty and the Beast. No, too. no, a- aged up for the audience. Beauty and the uh, Beast, more for, hey, fa- story time. I get you. Yeah, I get yeah, you. yeah. Sarah yeah. Mass is writing it for women, and where Beauty and the Beast mm. is writing it for the kids. Disney version, the, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about the Disney version mm. everyone knows, not the fairy tale version yeah yeah i think that gets a little grimmer yeah <laughs> probably <laughs> disney just said let's change all those to be neat well okay we're talking about these relationships between tamlin fairy uh fairy 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 i got it yep you got it there's also a surprise third third part of this love trying mm. what were your thoughts on what is it rye sand rye sand that, that's the name yeah how did you feel about that because i Gives us pretty rapey vibes. Gives us very rapey vibes. No. Uh, and, like, by the end, you're supposed to take it as, like, yeah, he was ge- he was rapey. Well, not rapey. Sexual assaulty. But, also, but he was doing it for good. For her own good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's... Not- that's not good. You know, if anyone's noticed in this whole conversation on Aquatar, we're trying our best to like, <laughs> we're we're trying our best to word this in a way where people understand. Hey, rape. We're not pro- <laughs> the bad, bad, uh, sexual assault, bad. Not not good. Never good. But what I got from this message is sometimes <laughs> what. This particular woman, not women in general, but this particular woman in the story wants it or appreciates is like fantasizes a little bit of sexual assault, but like for my own good. I don't know. (laughs) Uh. So here's the thing what we're trying to conflate is because, okay, here's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could, if this was written at the end of the book, it's shown as like, hey, this is not good. This is bad. It'd be like the, the main, that character is not the hero not a villain but like the end of the book is shown like oh i misunderstood him actually he was doing this all for for my sake and kind of like layering it up for a spinoff of like i don't know how i feel about him it's like it's the love triangle like oh do i take the guy who's hundreds of years older than me and like tricked me into they're all they're all uh, hundreds of years older than her that that tricked me into coming to his house and then uh, nibbled me (laughs) and or the man who who Okay, maybe here's the line as well. Where Sergey Mass me, drugged me and paraded the, me, the mostly nude in front of everyone else. Yeah, the thing that's supposed to be nights. Oh, every it, at least he didn't like. Oh, uh, you know, at least he didn't do that to me. He, he only, only he only he copped only, a feel. Yeah, he he only did. It's again. Oh, you didn't do the extreme, so that makes it okay. I'm just getting very weird messages or what's trying to be said here, and I guess. Maybe we're looking too into it, and supposed to be. Listen, Feyre is. Uh, Look, I'm trying to see with the people that like okay, this. What's the reason? The Help me understand. This is both, I think, for guys and girls. Yeah, yeah. Human beings kind of like value the risque, the little like the little forbidden, the taboo, naughty. Basically, if everything is like up and up, it's like it's not exciting. Yeah. Taboo, forbidden. Risky, that's exciting. Yeah, and yeah. so book deals into like, you know, it's a little ooh, taboo, it's a little risque. I mean, that's mm-hmm. what makes it exciting. I think it's pretty easy to go over. And so the balancing the line is what lines can those guys cross? And there are some things that they if they did cross, it's like that's a no go. So you have to make it both exciting but still acceptable. They have to get right up to that line. And then not cross it. Because if they do cross it, then it's like, no. Like, if Tamlin killed Feyre's dog. Nope. 
doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how hot he is. It's still going to uh, to no go if he actually. Tamlin, you know how no, in uh, but, how I met your mother, it's the yeah. hot crazy scale. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. with female, it's the the hot psycho scale. How how hot is the guy compared to how uh, how much how of much a psychopath? I fear yeah. I fear for my life. That kind of thing. Yeah. So because guys, you know, you're doing the hot crazy, like ah, oh, the the whole oh, the, okay, the hot crazy scale versus the oh, reaching ahead. out to the women here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is, is it for suppose them. okay from. The lesson I learned from this book, mm-hmm. which, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a little hot if you're a little bit scared. But not too life. scared. Not too scared. Because a it's, little it's bit, like, the hot psychopathic scale. Like realizing like, oh my God, this guy actually could like destroy me. Like, oh, oof. I don't want to get on his bad side. He's He's dangerous. And like, that's the thrill is he's dangerous, but then like you tame him. Like, it's my Guess and also yeah, it's the you would never want to be unsafe with somebody. But the thing is, Feyre doesn't feel unsafe. She feels eventually. The, yeah, well, that's... well, at the beginning with maybe here's what we're getting to. I think we're dissecting this book. Oh yeah, I think by it. the end this is gonna be our favorite novel. <laughs> <laughs> Forget Wheel of Time. <laughs> Forget Red Rising. Ah, I don't Echo need Tar. swords and action. I just I need... just need some slow back and forth. Uh, you know, I guess you still wait. Wait, syndrome. you're still getting swords and Aquatar. Do you? That was a euphemism. Ah, <laughs> yes, you do. The royal sword. It, yeah. You know, you know Farah. you know, sheathed the royal fairy sword. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I just say, look at this. We got a candle out. We dimmed the lights. We, we dressed up for we a did. podcast episode. Life's My pretty, mother no, watches this. I just want to say aside, life's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell my mom to skip this one. That, that'd be wise. <laughs> I hope. I hope she skips it. <laughs> I'm going to send this to your mother just to make sure she watches it. Please no. <laughs> so, uh, what, what was our point there? The, we were talking about uh, the uh, hot psycho scale, the yeah, fearing yeah, yeah. for your life. Okay, yeah, breaking down what the what the me- the kind of message is. Because look at the hot crazy scale for guys. Mm-hmm. Hot crazy scale is like, oh, she's too crazy. Then, oh, I wouldn't want to sleep with her because that would be a whole mess. Uh, who, was it Barney Stimson from How I Met Your Mother, right? No, just and then how the, hot they have to be yeah. to deal with the crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Versus maybe this scale is the hot psychopath scale. Like, how how much do I fear? If I fear for them too much for how hot they are, oh, my God, I, I might die. Like, that's a crazy person. You got to be safe. I, well, here's the I completely safe. Like a completely safe individual is not hot, because completely safe means no power. Right, Bob from marketing. If, no if, one's fucking Bob. <laughs> no one's fucking Bob from marketing. But no, it's the whole idea of are you are you kind because you can't be mean, or are you kind because you choose to do it? So it's you're capable Tam- of violence, but you do not do it because Tam- you have control. Tamlin's kindness and his warmth mm-hmm. and the security he offers is only valuable because he's capable of great violence and great uh, destruction and like that kind of danger. Right. It's valuable because he is dangerous to the world, but not to her. Mm-hmm. Versus if he's just not dangerous to anybody, that's not. Like, then him being safe is not really anything special. That's just who he is. Yeah, well, it's kind of like her her boy toy back in back in the town. Like, what power does he have? What sweat? Like, he's not dangerous to anybody. Yeah. It, it, there's not much of a love connection. Like, she's yeah, she's safe around him, but it's that's not really his choice. And, that's just because he's not powerful. Yeah, and that and res- has no influence. Do other people respect you? Yeah, because you look at you look at a partner and you go, man. So if you're if look, looking at Tamlin here, mm-hmm. looking at a guy of if no one respects the person, if no one looks to them for advice or no one is friends with them, or there's all these bad red flags and going, mm-hmm. wow, they have no position to where anybody listens to them or they're not in, you know, they're not in charge of anybody or they're they're not even part of a social group. They don't. That's immediately putting all these things of why does nobody else look to them for something? I want the person that everybody else is looking at. Kind of like the guy is going, oh, every per- the girl that walks into the bar 
and every guy's eyes look at her. That guy's yeah. immediately going like, oh my God, she's so valued. Like everyone's looking at her. Oh, I want her too. And then you use that. Mm-hmm. And then the female's going, oh man, this guy who everybody respects, Tamlin, he's the head of this whole, mm-hmm. what's his, the spring court. And he's got this Lucian who's with him and his bud and Alice who's, uh, he's, he's got this, he's got this influence. And then the female's going, uh, or the favorite's going in here. Oh, that's a man. That's a man that I want. Other people respect, other people want him. Other people, I want him too. Well, it's, it's instantly becomes valuable if it's harder to obtain. Yeah. So him being, it's, everyone wants what you can't have. And the, that's basically it. Like who would, who are you to basically have like own the affection of one of the lords of the Fey, like right. one of these powerful beings that controls all this? Like that's pretty exclusive. So I don't know. It just makes me think about the the idea of being safe, being kind. All of these positive qualities that someone may say like, oh yeah, this is what I want. That's not it on its own. It's you're giving it, you're giving that person safety, security, um, uh, stability because you're capable of chaos. You're capable of destruction. You're capable of this. That's what makes it really attractive. It's that rarity in a sense too, Mm -hmm. where no one wants, no one's going and trying to put a stone on their finger or on their, uh, on their neck, they're looking for a diamond. Well, think about like, uh, there's several scenes where Feyre uh, sees Tamlin be a monster. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the claws are out, like he's ripping them up, he's going out, he's fighting, he's yeah. got blood on him, and she's scared of him. Mm. Terrified, of like, oh my god, he could rip me to shreds. Oh my god, he's one of the high lords of the Fey. And <laughs> she sees like him when he's in his beast's form and all like that and he's going nuts and crazy and then she sees the sensitive side when he actually is becomes vulnerable to her and so it's that dichotomy and she like sees oh i can bring out his sensitive side and so yeah he's capable of all these terrible things but not with me but not with me yeah and I, I think when we're hey, learning some stuff, I think this is this is our what the, lesson. This is what I'm the learning. book's telling us. Okay, yeah. Tell us if we're wrong. Hey, if we're wrong, that's not me. That's what she's that's wrong. Hey, Sarah if, Jane if Mass we're wrong, taught she's me. wrong. Exactly. Not exactly. It's not us. <laughs> it's Sarah Jane Mass. Blame the woman. <laughs> Blame the woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I know why Tamlin likes Feyre. You know why? Huh. The two women I, in his life are Feyre or Amarantha. Who would you choose? Yeah, okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna sound a little sexist here. What? I, I just had this this thought came up. I gotta express it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so ready for this. Okay. Introduction of Amarantha. Uh-huh. I thought it I laughed on the plane with it. <laughs> with what? With when, when Feyre walks in uh-huh. and sees Amarantha, it's like Oh yeah, she's pr- she's kind of pretty, but not as pretty as me. Oh, is that and what she said? Basically, like, there's something about her that, like, it's in her eyes that she's become hollow, and it's specifically talking about how unattractive she particularly is, and like mm. making across the point that Farah is prettier than her. And I was just kind of yeah. looking, and I was like, of course the the female villain is like. Oh yeah, our main hero is actually actually much prettier than the villain. Like I just saw it, I was like going, okay. <laughs> I felt like, of course. Uh, yeah. it, it was. It's the male equivalent of, I don't know, just the. Of course, I have a bigger car. Yeah, like it's like, oh yeah, I'm the I'm the macho man. I'm the yeah. you know, I'm the strongest. You yeah, know, I don't know. I saw it. I was like, of course. <laughs> so you were walking in there going, Pharaoh was seeing like, ah. Uh, Amaranth, she was viewing Amarantha through a oh, Tamlin. Uh, well, it's the wish fulfillment eyes, uh, yeah, of course. You, you want your you Farrah want your main is, protagonist to have it all going on. Yeah, that is, especially by the end, like no, she's the prettiest. Got it's, it. Okay, <laughs> I I just I felt a little sexist reading that moment of going, 
Of course she is. Oh, <laughs> of course. Oh. Of course Amrantha is not uh, as pretty. Of course she's the ugly bitch. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> you can't have the villain be prettier than no, her. No. no. <laughs> well, just the- like you can't have the villain be stronger than our main male character. Like, he's not... He's not a... Uh, I'll the be villain, honest. The Rich, villain is more cowardly listen, than our hero. Rich, we're gonna... I'm gonna not... This isn't... So, what I'm about to say... Uh-huh. Is targeted at you in the best way oh i'm I'm gonna say for the first time rich before i say this oh a deep part of me somewhere does really care for you oh don't do that to me okay oh you're setting it up it's gonna hurt you know it's gonna hurt so you just explained that with amarantha the romance i see here is like the flip side of what happens in the wheel of time for the guys yeah. It's like the romance equivalent in real time, like, you know, Perrin or Rand or all the, of course, all the women yeah. love Rand or Perrin and Faye or Fa- uh, whatever. It's like, it's the, <laughs> I'm saying like Faye, not Faye. 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 Yeah. It's the same thing in reverse. 100%. So, so yes. all, all we yes. need to look at here oh, is yeah. guys have the same thing in Men their wish fulfillment. It. Men do it. We're, women do it. It's all fine. If everyone does it, it's fine. It's, it's, it's all cool. It's, it equals hell. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, you know, I'm rethinking Here's the thing. now. Wheel of Time, though, has inside it the opposite, too. It has the Lan and Nynaeve, which is like, Lan is your, I would say, closer to your Tamar, Tamalin. You know, where she kind of falls in love with... Uh, don't, Le- don't, don't, don't go too into... Spoilers territory, just for people. I know, but time. like, but yeah. okay. Your male characters yeah. have, like, the female version. was like, yeah, like, the woman just kind of, like, sees them, love it. She yeah, decides, yeah. just like... Yeah, no. Male, male fantasy, wish fulfillment, yeah. No, there's one love story, which can, coincidentally, is actually the best love story in the whole series, that is the reverse, which is, you know woman male the main character yeah. falls in love with man over time and actually like grows to which yes. just works better right it works better <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but hey you see my point <laughs> oh i see it it's i there. see it so, I, I would just say lan is woman's wish fulfillment romantic character okay gotcha as close gotcha as gotcha you probably get he he's also just he's the man's man too I, all 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 people love lan it's, but that's fine but do all people love tamlin no, no, I don't think so. Uh, uh, so we touched on Amarantha. <laughs> I think we have got to focus on her for a minute here. Amarantha and the end of the book and the whole. Remember, I was explaining to you in the spoiler free oh, section that, that actually, like, I probably w- I would have enjoyed this book a lot more if it like landed it. It's just Amarantha's whole thing was dumb. <laughs> uh, so. What did you think about the final act of the book? What did you think about Amarantha, the three trials, the message about love? Stupid. It 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 was it was handled bad. I I, I I've I've danced around a lot of it where like I, I can understand some stuff. Th- this one with this one was bad. I, 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 and I thought it was stupid. The reason, so if you notice, this is the first video ever we've never done our rating system. This is beyond rating. It is both a 10 and a zero. It is both. <laughs> both exist in the same universe. It's us, it's, this is an exploration mm-hmm. to see why it's one of the most popular books out there. So we're establishing that, but when we're looking at the end, you can't see a redeeming quality. You can't see why would somebody like that. Because, hey, okay, is there something there? The, okay, on a plot level, yeah. it's where uh, Feyre, like, goes through probably the most physical crap and to deal with to really prove her love mm. to uh, Tamlin. So, like, maybe that's the exciting part. That's where a lot of stuff goes stuff down. Stuff does go down, Stuff yeah. happens. It's not mm. just talking. You know, right. she's actually has to... There's a lot more action in that part. You know, Sandworm from Dune Sandworm takes Sandworm from Dune. Uh, okay, it's, it was hilarious that like, she couldn't read. That was one of the puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> Logically, like, of I, course, yet yeah, I know she doesn't read, but like, I, I feel like <laughs> Sergey Vest put in some features of of uh, a favorite's character, like, oh, she paints, by the way, like, oh, okay, <laughs> oh, oh, she also can't just adds things to make her more have more personality or make her more rootable. Oh, yeah, she can't read, I should feel bad for her, or oh, she paints, she's an artist, cool, <laughs> which it does nothing for the story, but it's just there yeah. and exists. But just the whole Amaranth, like. 
her whole plan of oh yeah i'm go- one this human woman has nothing to offer me might as well just kill her now i guess entertainment oh yes yeah, yeah. i'm gonna offer you three trials to save your one true after to i tortured it. the first person to death and gored them their eyes out but you main character trials <laughs> Yeah, you get trials, and some of them are quizzes, and you get riddles. <laughs> other, other, and, and other woman end. got spoons, spooned her eyes out, and like just skinned or flayed alive. You get a riddle where the answer and, is love and a multiple choice. One oh yeah, three. three choices. <laughs> Also, multiple choice answer. Also, at the end, where she's like, you know what, Amarantha, I'm gonna. She she risks the love of her life, Tamlin, to go on the off chance this human who she hates doesn't kill him, who she thinks that Vera actually doesn't, doesn't love, love, him, love him, but risks the person she thinks she doesn't love, Tamlin, to die. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. I, I I will say part of it Uh uh-huh so you explain that to me and then i read it Mm -hmm. and i think it's a little better than you initially pitched it oh because tell me yes pharaoh's point is her like her whole realizing like wait a minute amarantha wouldn't risk talent she loves him yeah why would she put him here amarantha knows something that i don't and that's part of the reason why she was like oh he has a heart of stone. He actually won't die because Amarantha wouldn't risk Tamlin. So oh, that's why right. she does it. Oh, you, I did forget about that. You're right. So like I overlooked that. Part of that is yeah, like, yeah, yeah. now it's still kind of dumb. That just upped my rating for the book. <laughs> it's still kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she didn't actually risk his life. You're correct. That, look, make that correction and note in the That was the one story. of the clues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that. I I did read that happened, but I forgot that happened because I was, think, I was just thinking Amarantha was so ridiculous. You know what? I didn't give Sarah J. Mass enough credit. No. I thought I was smarter than her. I am not. You're not. No. no. I, oh no. He understands Sarah J. Mass will is more accomplished than you will ever be. Oh, I don't. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm mostly okay with that because the fact that she showed millions. Here, here's the tough part about this. You know, we didn't love the story. To put it lightly. To put it lightly. No. No. I gotta. There's something about when something sells so much, it earns a level of respect. Yeah. Regardless of if you think it's slosh. Regardless. It's there's, some, there's something of value there. And it's, it's, you know the movie Avatar? A lot of people love Avatar. Yeah. You, I don't like Avatar, but it has billions. Billions with a B. Does it mean I like it more than other things? Like, no, it's one of my, it's down there at the bottom of the pole. But enough people read a thing, enough people watch a thing, you go, okay, they gotta see something. What am I missing? And it's more the curiosity of seeking the truth mm-hmm. and going, what is it that I don't see? Why is everybody looking at this? So when you ask people about Avatar, it's like, man, did you see how crazy that? Like, look at that film mm-hmm. and the the story about the paralyzed. I mean, that touched me. That makes look at the themes about. Invaders versus the colonizer and and the, the nature and fighting for like all these themes. I'm going, but I like the themes in this, 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 and this book that do the same thing. But uh, I would say that. But that's why people like it. So when we're exploring Akotar, what we're really just trying to come down to is an understanding. It's I don't have to agree. I just want to understand why people love this book. And that is our message. That is our message in this entire video is we, we would like to understand and maybe if this if this video gets enough, hey, as we're saying, a lot of people watch a certain thing or view a certain thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe we read book two if people want. Oh, don't. Oh, God, please. In fact, I'm going to guarantee Richard is reading it by... I'm just going to make a promise to get him, Phil. Yeah, uh, we'll say this. Do, let, it, let us let know. Us know. Let us know in the comments, like, hey, does it get better in the second book? I imagine it's going to retell a different fairy tale kind of like this was beauty and the beast yeah. i imagine i some for some reason my brain is telling me the little mermaid is the one being told next i could be wrong for some reason that's in my head but i'm gonna end us off with a quote here from the book from sarah j mess oh wonderful let's let's yeah. send us off right he eased me onto the bed <laughs> murmuring my name against my neck the shell of my ear the tips of my fingers, I urged him faster, harder. 
His mouth explored the curve of my breast, the inside of my thigh. A kiss for each day we'd spent apart. A kiss for every wound and terror. A kiss for the ink etched into my flesh and for all the days we would be together after this. Days, perhaps, that I no longer deserved. But I gave him myself again to that fire, threw myself into it, into him, and let myself burn. Which, we're not ending exactly with that because I just do want to say, that's not badly written. Like I, the, No, the, no. I, I'm not making fun of it, in a sense. It's... Neuromancer that's, is That's better way than worse. the the guy slosh that we write about women. 100%. Way better. Rich, I think this was a good podcast. Yeah. Signing off. Yeah, signing off. <laughs> that was great, man. Oh, yeah. That was a good 100%. job. 100%. Yeah. Really good Fantastic job. Fantastic stuff. What would you really think about it? Did we do pretty know. well? Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the camera.